Hello everyone. So welcome to my new video. This time, let me discuss to you the graph of rational functions. In this video, I'll be discussing the step-to-step -step process as in how to graph any kind of rational functions. So in graphing a rational function, all we need to do is to find first the elements one by one in order for us to determine what kind of curve our function would look like. This time, I have here a given function, and that is f of x is equal to x plus 1 all over x minus 2. Okay, this first step is to find the asymptotes. Asymptotes. By the way, what is asymptotes? So, asymptote is a line that the graph of a function gets close to but does not touch or crosses to it. Okay, so we have two kinds of asymptotes. So, let's first discuss the first type, which is vertical asymptote. In finding the vertical asymptote, all we need to do is to equate the denominator to 0. So, the denominator of the given function is x minus 2. So, that when we equate that to 0, that is x minus 2 equals 0. And then we solve for the value of x. So, we are going to transfer negative 2 to the other side of the equation. Then we get or we have x equals 2. This is now our vertical asymptote. x is equal to 2. So, the point for the vertical asymptote is 2, 0. Then, we proceed to finding the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so in finding the horizontal asymptote, all we need to do is to divide the leading coefficient of the numerator and the denominator of the given rational function. And by the way, what is coefficient? Coefficient class is the number beside a variable. In our function, the variable here is x. We have the letter x. That is the variable. And this time, what is the coefficient? What is the number beside it? So, there is no number. So, automatically, we all know that any given variable, it has a numerical coefficient of 1 automatically. Okay, so therefore, we have here 1 on the numerator and we also have 1 on the denominator. So, we write here y is equal to 1 all over 1 and then 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1. Then y equals 1 is our horizontal asymptote. Its point is 0, positive 1. So after finding out the value for our vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote, we have to plot them on the Cartesian plane and draw a line. Okay, this is now the Cartesian plane and then we have here the asymptotes. So this dotted line, color in green color, it refers to the vertical asymptote and it has a point here. 0 and 1. And then this dotted line in the blue color, in blue color, it refers to the horizontal asymptote. So that's it. So these are the asymptotes. Then after finding the asymptotes, let's proceed to step number 2 and that is, okay, so I have combined step 2 and 3, that is to find the intercepts and zeros. Intercepts refers to any given point of the curve or graph which intersects the axis. So a certain point of the curve that intersects the x-axis, of course, that is the x-intercept, which is also called as the zero of the graph. And then the point of the curve which intersects the y-axis, that is the y-intercept. Okay, so now for y-intercept, in solving for the y-intercept, we're going to equate x to zero. That is when x is equal to 0. And then we substitute the value of x to the function we have, which is f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 2. And then we let f of x be equal to y. And then, uh, and then change the variable x to 0. We have here y equals 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 2. And then we perform the indicated operations. So, 0 plus 1, of course, that is 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So, that we have negative 1 half. y is equal to negative 1 half. This is now our y-intercept. y equals negative 1 half. Then, we proceed to the x-intercept. So, for x-intercept, we're going to equate y equals 0, or that is when y equals 0. 
using the same function f of x equals x plus 1 all over x minus 2. The f of x here is also equal to y variable. So we're going to change f of x into 0. So we have 0 equals x plus 1 over x minus 2. And then we are going to apply the multiplication property of equality. So that is by simply having or doing cross multiplication. So x plus 1 on the left side and 0 times x minus 2 on the right side that is equal to 0. So we have x plus 1 equals 0. Then solve for the value of x. We are going to transfer 1 to the other side. So we have x equals negative 1. The value of x which is negative 1 is the x-intercept and the 0 of the graph. That is also the 0. The x-intercept as well as the 0 of the graph is x equals negative 1. And then for us to know the points, so we have here the intercepts of the graph of the function will intersect at the points. 0, negative 1 half, it is the y-intercept and negative 1, 0, it is the x-intercept. After knowing the points, we're going to plot and locate this on the Cartesian plane. So this is our graph. And then the point here on the x-axis, this the, the point is at negative 1, 0. It refers to the x-intercept. And then the point on the y-axis, which is at 0, negative 1 half, it refers to our y-intercept. At this point of time, we can now imagine how our graph would look like. So in graphing this point, so we're going to connect this by we're going to connect this points by a curve, by a curve, smooth curve, so just like that. Okay, but before doing that, let's proceed to step, to the next step. The next step is to find the domain and range of a rational function. So now, we are going to write first the given function, f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 2. So we're going to find the value of the domain first. So, in finding the value of the domain of a rational function, we're going to equate the denominator to 0. So, we have here x minus 2 equals 0. Then, solve for the value of x. So, we have x equals 2. What does it mean? It only means that the domain of the function is the set of all real numbers except x equals 0. Why? Because when x equals 0, the function will be undefined. So this is in words, and now let's represent this into a set notation. The set notation would look like this. So it is read as, x is an element of all real numbers such that x is not equal to 2. I will repeat, x is an element of, any, of all real numbers such that x is not equal to 2. Okay. And then we are going to represent this into an interval notation. And it would look like this. Okay. So this one is the union. This is the union of from 2 going to negative infinity. So we have here the parenthesis. It only means that 2 is not included in our solution. And then 2 to positive infinity. It only means that positive 2 is not also included to our solution. Okay. So this is the domain of the function we have above. And now let's proceed to finding the range. So in finding the value of the range, okay, from f of x, we're going to change that into y. And then after that, we're going to interchange the variables. From y, it will become x. From x, it will become y. So this is the scenario. From y, it becomes y x. From x, it, be it becomes y. From y, it becomes x, I repeat. And from x, it becomes y. And then we do some cross multiplication or by applying multiplication property of equality. So we're going to multiply x to y minus 2. So we have here this one. x multiplied to y, quantity y minus 2 equals y plus 1. And then we, we are going to distribute x to each term. x times y and x times negative 2. So we have xy minus 2x equals y plus 1. And after that, we're going to combine the like terms. So we are going to transfer y to the left side of the equation and we transfer negative 2x to the right side of the equation. So we have xy minus y equals 2x plus 1. 
This time, we can factor out this one, this expression on the right, left side. So, it has a common variable of y, right? And then, we, equate, we factor it this out, so that is equal to y, quantity x minus 1, equals 2x plus 1. Okay, this time, we're going to solve for the value of y. For us to solve for the value of y, we're going to eliminate this binomial beside it. So, all we need to do is to divide the whole equation by x minus 1. And when we divide that by x minus 1, so the left side would be y only. So, this is equal to y is equal to 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. And by doing the same process on finding the domain, we're going to equate the denominator to 0 and solve for the value of x. So, x is equal to 1. It only means that the range of the function is the set of all real numbers except y is equal to 1. Sir, why is it that the result there is x equals 1, then the value of then the exception here or the restriction on the value of row, the range is y equals 1. Because we are going, we are solving value of x in term, value of y in terms of x. So that's the reason. We solve the value of y in terms of x. So we are going to let x be equal to y. And then in symbol, okay, this is now the set notation. y is an element of all real numbers such that y is not equal to 1. This is now the set notation of the value of our range. And then by representing this as into a an interval notation, this is the image. It's a union of 1 to negative infinity and, the un and 1 to positive infinity, wherein 1 is not included in our solution. Why? Because it has a parenthesis beside it. Okay, that's a parenthesis. When, if you can see a parenthesis, it means that the number beside it is not included to our solution set. Okay, that's the process on how to find the domain and range of a rational function. Okay, just take some time to internalize and to study further. I'll give you some seconds. I think you're good, so now let's proceed. So after finding the dominant range, let's proceed to constructing table of values so we can now plot the points on our graph, on a Cartesian plane and trace the graph of a rational function. So I have here table of values. So we're going to represent to present again the given function. And then I have here the table of values. So I use, I assign numbers or values to x variables. So I have here negative 4 to positive 4. And then we solve for the value of y using these numbers, these values. For All we need to do is to substitute these x values to the x variables in our function. So when x equals negative 4, we have here negative 4 plus 1, that is negative 3. Negative 4 minus 2, that is negative 6. So all negatives, so 3 over 6, that is 1 half, equals 0 0.5. Then we write 0 0.5 on the table here. And then we proceed to x equals negative 3. Same process. Okay, so we have here negative 3 plus 1, that is negative 2. Negative 3 minus 2 equals negative 5, all negatives. So therefore, that is positive. That is 2 fifth. And 2 fifth is equal to 0 0.4. Then we write this value on the table here, below negative 3. Then let's proceed to x equals negative 2. So, we have f of negative 2. It only means that the value of x is negative 2. Then we substitute all the values of x into negative 2. So, we have here negative 2 plus 1 equals negative 1. Negative 2 minus 2 equals negative 4, all negative. So, therefore, we will be having a result of positive. That is 1 fourth. And 1 fourth is equal to 0 0.25. And we write 0 0.25 on the table here. Here, there it goes. And then when x equals negative 1, so we, here is the solution. Negative 1 plus 1, that is 0. Negative 1 minus 2, that is negative 3. And 0 divided by negative 3 is equal to 0. And we write 0 on the table below negative 1. And then how about x equals 0? Same process. 
0 plus 1 is 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. That is negative 1 half. And that is equal to 0 0.5. We write negative 0 0.5 on the table. And then let's proceed to x equals 1. Okay, that is 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 minus 2 equals negative 1. And 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. And we write negative 2 on the table below positive 1. How about x equals 2? So we have here 2 plus 1, that is 3. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 divided by 0 cannot be. That is undefined. So we write the word undefined on the table below the value 2. Okay, so let's proceed to x equals 3. Here is the solution. So we have in the numerator, 3 plus 1, that is equal to 4. 3 minus 2, that is equal to 1. And 4 divided by 1 is equal to 4. Then we write 4 on the table below positive 3. And lastly, we have 4 as the value of x. Same process. 4 plus 1 is 5. 4 minus 2 is 2. 5 halves is 5 divided by 2. That is equal to 2.5. So we write 2.5 on the table. So this is now the table of values for the function f of x equals x plus 1 all over x minus 2. Okay. Another fact. So we can extend the values here. So not only from negative 4, we can go on the left sides, so we can have negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, so on and so forth. We can also have here on the right side, positive 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. Okay, we can extend the table of values. Okay, and now the last step is to graph the function using the points found on the table of values. Let's assume we extend the points. We extended the points there on the table of values and this would be the image of our graph okay look it for yourselves okay observe this is not a graph okay from a while ago we have the two points here this are the intercepts of the graph this is the x-intercepts at zero at point negative one zero at point rather at point okay negative one zero and this is, is the y-intercept at point zero and negative one half okay as you can see class the graph of a rational function is symmetrical okay it is symmetrical since this curve class if this is u and there is a mirror here this is the reflection of the curve here below okay this is the reflection okay that is now the pattern of irrational of the graph of a rational function. So that's it. So that's all for the discussion on how to graph rational functions. So I hope you learned something from it. So thank you for listening. Okay.